I also want to mention real quick that we have Connie here tonight shooting video. Connie is shooting a short film about the whiskey and about how amazing the whiskey is at supporting the local music scene here and how much the whiskey has to do with the Annapolis music scene that we all have here. So if you see Connie moving around tonight, give her some love, give her some space, but more importantly, give her some love. A lot of uh, camaraderie and, and uh, raising the bar and, you know, there is that creative energy and that, you know, that make music and uh, be creative and, you know, constantly originality and, but it's more like, it, it, it's more embraced than, than some sort of competition. It's more like uh, raising the bar, you know, going out every week downtown and just, you know, seeing what's, you know, who's got a new song on their set or something like that. It's, there's constantly something to tune into. Everyone, if y'all could just make a little bit of noise for fucking, for, for the best club in, in Annapolis, in my opinion, the Whiskey, for keeping, for making this music seem what it is, man. It wouldn't exist without this club because it, it really does fucking put the music first in it. It's very necessary. And for the Redskins being the Cowboys tomorrow. Because... Uh, whiskey for existing. Because uh, when, I know that when, when Jamie and I are 80 years old and we're, we're sitting in our rocking chairs together and doing shots, it's, it's days exactly like this that we're going to remember. Remember when we played at the Whiskey in Annapolis, honey? So uh, the whiskey has brought us so many amazing memories, so I've been really excited for today. I call it a family reunion. The family that I actually enjoy hanging out with. Working in this building, I've been here on and off since around 2000, which makes that 10 to 12 years, minus time for school. Been here through four different restaurants, and I would say this is by far the best one. Uh, in the past 12 years, music has gone from your happy hour, one, two person acts downstairs, to now all night shows, sold out shows, semi national acts. It's a music venue now more than any other question. The whiskey. We, we love the whiskey. The whiskey is awesome. Yes. It's, um, you know, Mike and the whiskey pretty much, you know, brought all these Annapolis bands together and, um, I mean, it's a community. Um, all of us love playing with each other. It's a family of fans, and um, you know, it's, it's very unique. The city is well. The city, these bands. Um, there's a friendly competition, but uh, we love doing shows with each other. A lot of us. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of us are on each other's CDs, and uh, you know, it, it really is a very rare thing to see uh, bands get along like we all do. Uh, so many good bands out here. Uh, Sweet Lead, uh, Grilled Lincolns, Eight Ohms. That's my band. I gotta plug my own band. Um, Bumpin' Uglies. I mean, there's tons of them. And um, yeah, Iron Lincoln's Higher Hands. I love jamming with these guys. And he's awesome. This guy's okay. <laughs> he's great. So yeah, see, we're in different bands, and uh, you know, we're hugging and uh, we're cool. getting along. We're cool. so. It's fun. That's this guy plays guitar in my band. He's really good, and he's fun, and he's crazy. <laughs> Star Journal, day 365, year 2012. That's a Star Trek joke. <laughs> so, the whiskey for me is kind of like, I guess like as you get older, everyone kind of has like, their, like at least everyone who like drinks, I guess has like their bar. Like whiskey for me is, is my bar for a lot of reasons. Like. I guess the one that makes the most sense is because I have chosen to to try and make music my profession, and that's I mean it's, the, it's like the local rock club, you know. So it, it makes sense. That's it's like the watering hole where everyone like-minded people hang out.
It's the biggest thing that sets apart the whiskey. I mean, just by definition, from like other places that have music around here, is that it's a venue. You know, it has here's the PA, like a sound system, a really good sound system, and um, it brings in like big regional acts and, and even national acts. You know, it's but not with like the level of Ram's Head. You know what I mean? Like they take a chance on like kind of like smaller touring acts. You know, like Ram's Head is, is also great in itself, but it's just two different. Ram's Head is more, it's almost like, like classier, but not in like, to say the whiskey isn't classy, it's it's just like got more character and more the grit to it. You know, not, every, not everyone's like fucking Neil Young, you know, like it's like some people, like people who are coming up, they need a place to do that, you know, so you get a lot of touring acts that are, that are making a name for themselves in the region coming through, and when they come through Annapolis, they play at the whiskey. Or like Baltimore, they would play the eight by ten or shit. Like, you know, like all, like most towns have a place like the whiskey, and um, it's, it's cool. Like, it is on the whiskey. Like the whiskey. Like Mike has has done something awesome, and he has like, he's put together a great place that everyone calls home. But it really is more of a reflection on the scene, in my opinion. You know what I mean? It's like just where everyone hangs out. It's like the local rock club. You know? But it is. It is great in that regard because like you know there's guys who play in like five different bands and like three of the bands will be on a bill one night you know so he'll play like and they'll play like different instruments and shit like like Larry Byrne for example from the Dire Hands like one of these acoustic showcases I saw him play saxophone with one band I saw him play banjo with another band I saw him play guitar with another band and his fucking first instrument is keyboard which is Larry so he didn't even play like his first instrument that night and that kind of shit is just like everywhere, like it's, it's, it's happening all the time. And I mean, um, people like myself, I'm not necessarily like a, I'm more of a songwriter than, than a musician. Like I'm more, so I'm not like gifted like that. Like it's fucking awesome to be able to like show up and like be like, all right, cool, you're gonna do this. Like, are you cool doing that with me? And like just like putting together a band by the end of the night, and then it's just an, an experiment. It's always awesome. So. And uh, it's most places just aren't like that. Like a lot of places, like musicians, like compete for fans and compete for shows, and compete for slots. And there's, I mean, there's still like some of that, you know. But it's more about the camaraderie and the scene and, and respecting like, the struggle that everyone kind of has. Because it really is, like, it's a struggle. The whole thing's a struggle. My. Chasing a vision through much opposition Recording decisions in an old composition Quietly wishing I keep double fisting Cause failure is all I've seen My mom thinks I'm crazy My dad thinks I'm lazy My future is hazy I don't let it phase me They know they raised me to look past what pays Find happiness from the pain Take the good with the bad The bad with the worst First with the last And the last with the first And I always aim up But I'm usually let down Climb the ladder Just to fall to the ground I keep playing songs To an empty room Take my grain of salt Rub it all in my wounds Cause I'm gonna keep trying But there's blood in my veins Anything worth having Is worth a little pain So when I'm holding this life's change My memories They remain Disregarding the bitching pompous musicians who keep on insisting this is competition. I quietly listen, maintain my position. We all share the same dreams. 
So I'll reach for the stars if we save that song hold Let the words Joe speaks bring peace to my soul Cause my future is unclear but I'm placing my bet On a small chance of bliss over a life of regret Take the good with the bad The bad with the worst First with the last and the last with the first And I always aim up but I'm usually let down Climbing ladders just to fall to the ground And keep playing songs to an empty room Take my grain of salt, rub it all in my wounds And I'm gonna keep shrub all this blood in my veins It's cool, like, I played, I played, when I was like starting out I played open mics around town a lot And I played, um, I played the whiskey like every Tuesday pretty regularly and it's where I reconnected with my drummer. It's where I met Wolfie, my bass player, for the first time. And eventually, like, he was playing with the Cheaters at that time. And then he started playing with us. And, uh, I mean, that's where I met, like, a lot of people who, like, come to our shows and, like, a lot of our, our first fans and shit. Like, people who were, like, at this point are some of my best friends, you know? At that point, like, I was in kind of a different part of my life. I wasn't really doing music. I, but now it's like it's my family. You know, I met most of those people that I have those kind of relationships with. And I got the whiskey. So really, I mean, it, it is that's the best way to describe it. Is it's like the watering hole for working class musicians. I mean, he's just always trying to like give back, I guess, to, to people who who come here. You know, I mean, like tonight, like we're doing this this cool acoustic thing and he's giving free beer and booze to all the to all the musicians which like to a bar it costs fucking like under a hundred bucks but you know it's not really anything big but it's huge you know and a lot of places don't do that you know just making sure that, that it's a fun time it doesn't like we there's definitely gigs like it's, it's a really running joke amongst musicians where you have like just like soul crushers is what you call it like gigs are just terrible and I mean there's more the rule than the exception, you know, and the whiskey is kind of the exception. It's always a good time. Even if it's a beat night, you know, you're still going to have fun and like, be around good people. We also do uh, the Annapolis Acoustic Jam series. Uh, this is the fifth one is the one we did tonight. And it's the first one we've done at the whiskey, and we're really happy to finally bring it over here. And it's the whole event's just one night of every band we can gather in the town and bring them in and uh, they do just small short acoustic sets and it's stripped down and really raw and it's a really killer it's a really killer show and you know the whiskey is the perfect spot for us to do the set and we're really happy to be here doing it. Consuming me from within It brings overwhelming sadness Slipping into madness Now you wanna hear me Here's my fairy Listen to this A little more thought And you need the bliss Recognize the truth Well, I think I'm a fool's and swiss I ain't saying I'm exonerated Really not that educated Don't interrogate Taking the fifth Because one day soon I will be dead
My name is Jeremy Ragsdale, and uh, I used to be the keyboardist for the Grilled Lincolns, and now currently I live in Boston, Massachusetts, where I'm one of the voice instructors at Berklee College of Music. So the Bump and Uglies. Um, I mean, I don't even want to take credit in any possible way, but I met Brandon back, back in the day. We were both in, like, well, I probably shouldn't say exactly what kind of situations we were in, like, but we, okay, we, were, we did musicals in, like, middle school. <laughs> and, and we met doing a show for Children's Theater of Annapolis. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm sorry, Brandon. Don't kill me. I'm sorry. I hope this doesn't kill your reputation. I'm sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. Um, so, so Brandon and I met years ago. <laughs> And <laughs> we've, we, you know, a lot of years went by, and and we uh, we didn't see each other. But then we started, you know, you know, seeing each other in the scene randomly, and just being like, oh my god, Brandon Harsey, oh my god, Jeremy Ragsdale, like, what, how you doing? Like, oh my god, how's things going? Good, good. Yo, you know, I'm playing a lot of guitar and singing these days. Turns out, I end up like being his voice teacher for about a year. And he's coming over to my parents' house. I'm like behind the piano. He's bringing his guitar, and we're working on like on voice, we're working on music theory, we're working on ear training, like, all sorts of stuff. So, like, you know, our, our working relationship is building throughout that, and, uh, you know, it, it was really just, I mean, like, such a good time. Now, I mean, at that point, like, Bumpin' Uglies was just, he hadn't even named the band yet. He came to me, he was like, what do you think of the name Bumpin' Uglies? And I was just like, I think that's friggin' hilarious. <laughs> like, I mean, you should absolutely do it. I mean, you know, are you gonna be a party band? Yep. Okay, perfect. You know, like, doesn't get much better than that. Like bump and uglies, best name ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. Yes. B like without a doubt, I'm proud of Brandon Hardesty. Like uh, I, I mean, I gave we we did some lessons together, but uh, what he's done since we did lessons has been like, I mean, I can't take credit for that. His songwriting, his voice, his guitar skills, just his general persona on stage. I mean, it's like. There's a reason I come down and always come to see him, even if he's doing like acoustic acts at Stan and Joe's or like acoustic acts downstairs at the Whiskey. You know, like it's it's a whole different ballgame now. Brandon is like taking over this whole scene, and I'm so happy to see it. Like, like so ridiculously happy to see it. Well, funny enough, like Ruckus, Ruckus and I met years ago, like when I was like 18, because we were dating the same girl. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> There was like maybe like two, three months of like an interval, and then he disappeared. And I hated him. Like I hated, obviously. Like I, I, I did not like him at that time. And then I didn't see him for years. And then I was like, when I, when I started playing electric guitar, you know, I always played acoustic guitar, and I got an electric guitar. And I didn't know how to play lead. Like I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, I can figure it out as I go on. But I started going to blues jams, trying to like pick shit up. And they had a blues jam here, and then for one of the first ones I ever went to, I met Ruckus there. And then we just re like, it like, it's weird, you know, because like, I, I recognized him immediately and then we just started talking and we started hanging out and shit, you know, it's like, it took him, we've taken him on a couple tours, like, you know, I slept in a van with him over here, you know, so like, it's weird, they <laughs> can't reconnect like that. I met Ruckus like one of the first weeks he moved here. Okay. <laughs> and now every time we see each other, it's like, time hasn't passed. It's literally like, we'll take like 30 seconds to catch up and then it's basically just like, so you want a shot? Yep. Cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, nice set. Yeah, you too. Oh man, so life is the same? Yep. Cool. Awesome. Great. Lifelong friends. Everybody here. Lifelong. <laughs> I have played Just Can't Handle It Without Brandon. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it feels like it's missing something, but yeah, we do it. <laughs> this next song right here, we're going to bring our good friend Mr. Brandon Hardesty out from the Bump and Uglies. Well, give us a hand right here. I can't handle it, it's just too much. When I'm dealing with the feelings about life and such It's tough to see through all the lies and deception The direction gets lost when they clouded your perception Rejection from society ain't nothing new to me I might just chill alone, but at least I'm feeling free I cease to conceal and step a bill on a beach You am my beast, I kill and I flee Screaming out lyrics so y'all can see what I mean But the words that I disperse in my lyrics I'm turning up so all of you can hear it Cause I just can't handle it 
Just can't handle it. Just can't handle it. I try to be a man, I find a way to manage it. I just can't handle 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 it. Whiskey, make some noise for Ruckus Brown and the Bad Decisions on a Saturday night. Everybody, thank you much. Mr. Brandon Hardison for the Bump and Ugly Show. on the road and do our sound. You know, it was actually really funny. Like, Ruckus, we always had a fun time with Ruckus. Like, he's such, he's such a great energy to have around any kind of band. And the fact that he has his own group now is like, the guys playing in his band are just like super lucky guys. But, so I, I'm just super jealous. <laughs> Another, another example, another example of like an, an exact example because he came up at the same time with, as me. It was Scribe. Like I, like when we, like he was starting to play open mics right when I started playing open mics. And it's crazy. Like I mean, like it, I, 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 I really want to say maybe he had like a couple months ahead of me, but like it was right around the same time. We've just been doing the same thing for like five years now, I guess. And he's just got so many different skill sets. Like with his art and shit, and like, like he's done most of the art at the whiskey, which is crazy. And then he'll like come, he'll like paint a mural at the whiskey, and then play a show at the whiskey that same night, and be selling like hats that he makes <laughs> after the show, like fresh for people. It's crazy. through Speakeasy, they're one of our sponsors, they're our official clothing sponsor, and it's, you know, we couldn't be happier about it. They got a great cause behind them, every shirt they do is for a different cause and it supports a charity, and that's, you know, what our band's all about too, you know, we always try to get back, and that's what Acoustic Jam's about, that's what I think this town's about, you know, it's a really different, it's a cool, very cool, different vibe. Uh, we come up every Tuesday and jam out with just different musicians every week and uh, met like a lot of, you know, kind of got a feel for like what kind of sound you were going for, but it was like a, always a party. It was kind of like, you know, practicing in your friend's basement and all your friends are there and everybody's having a good time, but you know, you're, you're practicing and it's a live live audience, so it was the perfect opportunity to kind of feel out songs and see what worked and uh, just have fun with it. So that's where a lot of like the, uh, you know, you could, you could write a song off 
you know, Thursday night, and then come out Tuesday and try it in front of a long live crowd. And a lot of, there was a lot of like creative energy and community going on right around that that period. And uh, of course, it was two for one drink, so it was some crazy times too. Even in Baltimore, um, just right down the road, you almost get this feeling like a. There might be a competition going on, like trying to one up each other and stuff like that. But you never, I never really got that in Annapolis. It's it's different because you know I've been, I kind of like came about in the in the scene, and uh, it's always been like a warm kind of like encouraging environment. But you go somewhere else, and it's kind of like you know hard to hard to get a gig and hard to make friends and people got their big egos and there's a lot there's a lot of uh, just you know uh, mutual respect and just having fun with friends around here that I think a lot of people are turned on by and you know there's we've been rolling around with like Pasadena and the Bumpin' Uglies and you know you're in a, in a van for eight hours and then there's people singing along to all these uh, all these songs, these original songs from the Maryland area, and I think a lot has to do with like what the whiskey's doing and stuff like uh, the Free State Workshop, and you know, getting all these guys together, and they got a lot of respect for what's going on, and they just want to get it out there. There's a lot of different ways to do that, but it takes a lot of people working together in an independent grassroots format, and uh, it's really cool. Um, the music community that comes through the whiskey, um, I've learned a lot from the past five years. Um, they are all interconnected somehow. Um, they all talk to each other, they always hang out to each, with each other, they tour together. Um, it's Once you become part of a band, it's like family, and I guess families break out and you have a lot more family out there. I think our biggest supporters are our local musicians. Um, they always find time to come support us when they're not playing. Um, they are treated very well when they come here. Obviously, they're the ones that are making the whiskey go around. Um, we see a lot of them. A lot of them are all local, local Naples based. Um, they call this home, and this is their home base. We consider it their home base. system in here. The crowd is always good, always fun. The staff is a blast. It's always a good time. I always love I always leave here exhausted. How long have you been playing here, Mike? Uh, since the whiskey opened. How's it been? Uh, Ten years now? It could be a hundred years, I wouldn't know. <laughs> but, but since they opened, um, uh, Mike Hearn, the owner, is a good friend of mine. And so, of course, I've been here with so many different bands. I was here with Higher Hands tonight. I play here with my own band too sometimes. But I'm a sister beginning. Mike is a real artist friendly type of uh, owner. And, 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 you know, he's always asking us what we want. What we want. So, different from a lot of places we play. We just have to accept what you uh, are offering. <laughs> yeah, so, some bands that play here, it's like their first gig. You know, he'll put them on, give them a chance, you know, when they're just learning and just starting out and everything. Which is really cool. It's really, I don't know of any place that does that, but he's always doing that, getting somebody you know on for the first time. It's really cool, good opportunity. Ton of great musicians, all really diverse. Uh, everything from jazz and country to funk and heavy metal and hip hop. So I live with everything. And a lot of really, really great musicians. Really. Good. And how do they get along with each other? Oh, we love each other. We love each other. We, we really do. It sounds funny, but we really do. I, I know I enjoy seeing these guys. I really, really love hanging out with them and stuff. So we all get along good. We're all happy with a chance to hang out with each other.
We do have annual shows here. We've done Blush here twice, which is a breast cancer fundraiser in April. We've done Dean Rosenthal uh, for Halloween. And every year we do um, a, a Christmas show, which we have coming up this year. And it's actually our five year anniversary of the whiskey. So it's, it's gonna be a pretty big show. We're gonna have music upstairs and downstairs. And anybody that's played here over the years is welcome to come in and do a 15 minute set and just hang out and have a really good time since it does have that community feel to it. John the Night Tripper. Got my satchel of green green in my hand. They tripping up and down the bayou. I'm the last of the best. I'm a green green man. Gumbo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where is it? What's that? Mask. Hmm. I already put my mask. It's not going to be anything without the mask. Mm -mm. Got to have a mask. There's hair over there. I thought you were wearing a mask. Oh! Thing down here like Just this. Is it on? That's what I was talking about, my decolletage. <laughs> Let me see. No, straight, turn on. Is it? We're not ready yet. I'm not, I gotta go out here. I gotta go. Uh, I really want to dress. Like made, made for bed. Yeah. Like warm. Like Lady Gaga kind of like. Yeah. She did the meat. Yeah. Thank you for feeling me on this. I think. <laughs> okay. I feel like a lot of light has been shed on this idea. Really Let's see if Mike it. can make some pancakes right now. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's make it happen tonight. <laughs> double T. We can go to the double T and we can order about. Yep. Six. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Twenty pancakes. Hey, one, two, yeah. three, four, um, five, six. I'm just gonna get the van tomorrow to settle it. I would say uh, about any one. shit in there. And I'll, I'll I'll move it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, Let's say twelve around. I would just need about seventy-two. All right. Let's do it. I want to have a dress made out of pancakes. <laughs> Warm pancakes. That's awesome. But I'm afraid that once I have the dress, that the awesome. pancakes will go cold. So I would need like. Syrup? Some backup people. Syrup could help if I it was be, heated. It could be syrup and butter. But I need okay. some people like on standby to replenish the pancakes yeah. to make sure they're warm. You understand? Right? <laughs> oh, 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 that's what I'm talking about. And look, we got some people in here tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you for coming out and supporting the music because that's what it's all about, people. Yes, indeed. Man, come over here. Get over here. Don't dance. Come here. Even though it's my name. You ain't got to pull your pants off right now. Even though it's my name. Jay Maros. Wait till he picks up the guitar. We got Dean Rosenthal here. I got Jeff Bober. I'm going to get him up in a minute. Man, dude, still looking like a rock star. That's why I don't like to get him up here, because he looks so damn good.
spots and uh, you know the, the scene here is totally different it's a different camaraderie you know it's it's a real family you know family vibe everybody helps each other out and tries to lift each other up and it's it's not like that a lot of spots you know it's it's really unique to what we got here we really appreciate it yeah they will cut you <laughs> <laughs> people try to steal each other's fans a lot of spots and it's not like that here it's you know here's the people that listen to us i hope they like you too so it's it's really cool hello my lover it was just you and i this infinite world can be ours if we just stay alive. Our castles and kingdoms are no one but ours to decide. As long as you'll still be here, no more I'm hoping you'll still be here, no more One more song, I'm gonna turn this microphone over to the baddest lady in the land. What you think about that one first? But I'm gonna need the help of some other SOBs out there. Where's Tobias Russell and Vicky Nova? Make some noise for Tobias Russell and Vicky Nova. <laughs>
let's do it on stage in front of everyone. Like we did it this morning. Before you make me breakfast. <laughs> I've been drinking. I hit it, I hit it good. <laughs> Mike Hearn, 
which has given kids of all ages a chance to uh, perform on the stage, uh, make some money, and learn about the music business. I think it's vitally important to give teenagers a place to come and listen to music in an environment where they're not out doing uh, unsafe things. So kudos to Mike for doing the program. Thanks to Ruckus, um, the whole staff here at the Whiskey for uh, welcoming the kids with open arms. And uh, yeah, rock on. Thank you. I had been searching for years for a, a venue for all ages shows to happen in, and unfortunately in the area there's not, there was not a, uh, a regular program. When I grew up we had a place in Sperna Park where we played every week and um, it really helped shape me as a person and a musician and so I thought it was vitally important to have a program that gave all ages bands a chance to play on a regular basis and Mike Hearn uh, opened the doors to all these kids. We started the program, it's called Rock of All Ages. We started in May of 2011 and we do it every Sunday in the summer. We do it twice a month during the school year. Uh, we've had over 5,000 people pay uh, through the course of the program. It's been extremely, extremely successful for the, uh, for the bands, for the whiskey, and for myself. Uh, it's been rewarding for all parties involved and we hope to see it continue for years. Performing here at the Whiskey gives all of the musicians an opportunity to play on a real stage where famous people have played and they get the full experience. They're not just walking on stage performing. They actually get to go to the green room, warm up, get with their bandmates, then they walk out. They're you know, presenting themselves to the audience. It's a formal venue and it's a wonderful experience for children of all ages to have. And I think she's enjoyed a lot of the gigs that she's had here at the Whiskey. She's been here a few times. What do you have to say about that? About performing um, at the Whiskey? I think that performing at the Whiskey is a lot like the real thing. Mm -hmm. And you have this guy who does the soundboard and everything you would have if you were well, you have everything you have to do a concert. Right. A real concert, as if you were a professional out there. So it gives you that full experience and boosts that self-confidence and that self-esteem and the love of the arts, which we really need to focus on in the future. When they start clapping, I just feel this giant spark of joy just go up into my head. <laughs> and I just feel so happy. Hi, we're Gray Skies, and we have John on piano, Mackenzie on bass, Sean on guitar, Joey on drums, and I'm Charlize. to play. Um, I'm involved with the Anne Arundel County High School Battle of the Bands and by giving the kids a stage to play all year long, the talent level of all the bands in the area that are growing up is getting so much better and the hope is that we're grooming the bands of the future. I mean, we're grooming the next Bumpin' Uglies, we're grooming the next Scribe and the guys that are killing it in the club now, by giving these kids a chance to play earlier on, we're going to see them blossom and by the time they're 21, they're going to be killing it on a whole new level. So uh, it's, it's really important, again, to teach them young, to teach them the business young, and to give them a chance to cut their teeth now so that the, uh, as Mike would call them, the future drinkers of America will, you know, be rocking the whiskey for years to come. I always believe that they should be, you know, reading, writing, and music. <laughs> you know, as well as other things, but uh, I just thought it was always important that they uh, learn music along with their uh, studies. It's just part of the human soul was to express yourself in music some way. 
Hey, I'm Cameron Smith. I'm Nick Eppler. We're from the band Shadi Kazadi. We just played here tonight at the Whiskey uh, for the Rock and Roll Asia show. And uh, we actually got started, uh, we went to Glen Burning High School together, and our band director suggested we do a battle with the bands. And uh, that's where we ran into Danny. Yeah, Danny was announcing the battle of the bands, and he met us and instantly wanted to bring us to the Whiskey to uh, play a couple shows. Yeah, we all, we all got along pretty well. Um, he did a great job with the battle of the bands and the program that we're on there. It's, it's, it's excellent. It's really easy to get into. They draw large crowds. They really get you worked into the whole idea of being a businessman and a musician and, and really selling your shows and really selling your hands. And uh, that's the same thing that you have to do here. It really prepares you for what you're doing later on uh, with your music. Yeah, the whiskey's a great opportunity for uh, you know younger kids who can't quite get into uh, playing on Saturday nights in bars because you're under 21. And the whiskey gives us a chance to come out here and play on Sunday nights for uh, you know rock of all ages. It's really a great program. Yeah, our parents can come here, our friends come here, and everything. And I saw like a six-year-old uh, doing some great covers earlier. And she, she absolutely rocked it. And that's something that you don't see anywhere, especially not a bar. And uh, also, you know, we both want to be musicians when we get older. And uh, I, I like to build gear. He likes to build gear. Um, he wants to teach, and this gives us a good place to you know work out our gear and, and really show people what we're doing, and just really get a good you know foothold down. The family here at the Whiskey is, you know, also fantastic. We have Ruckus, the sound guy, and uh, he's great. Uh, one time we were here with the band. How much stuff did we have? We had like, you know, we had like five. It was three people. We had like five guitars and like three amps and all kinds of, of stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two two SUVs full of, or like an SUV and a small car full of, uh, just stacked with everything that you can think of. And uh, he came up. And he was patient. You know, we explained to him what he wanted. He got it done very quickly and, and very professionally. He was a real nice guy to work with. And uh, he, he just does a fantastic job. And then of course there's there's Danny. Um, I mean, he does everything here. He does the booking and he, he gets everybody together and he gets he gets everything rolling. And, you know, without without Danny, of course, this wouldn't happen. Or without the you know the administration here at the whiskey and everything, this really wouldn't happen. The whole family, you know, we just we just owe it to them all to be able to play here and, and to be able to play here multiple times. And we've, yeah, we've been here quite a few times. It's you know the best place to get a gig and. and you know, we love playing with them and they love having us and it's just a fantastic thing. Playing with the Grilled Lincolns was such a great time in my life because, uh, you know, it, it, I had just gotten done with music school and uh, I moved back down here, which is where I'm from. I was born and raised here. Um, and, uh, you know, while I was in the Grilled Lincolns, one of the people who really, really gave us a good shot and a, a weekly opportunity to, to like hone our skills, get tight, uh, was Mike Hearn at the Whiskey. And uh, it, was, it was really, really important for us because, uh, I mean, it gave us all the skills that we needed to tighten up, get ourselves on the road, you know, really learn how a good business is run as far as being a band and also being a venue. You know, we got a lot of insight from Mike about you know what it's like to, to run a venue and what they find important in the bands that they hire and uh, I mean as far as Annapolis is concerned I mean Mike takes over the whole industry here uh, and when I say industry I mean industry Annapolis yes it's a kind of a small town but really I mean there's an industry here it's not just Annapolis it's Annapolis and Baltimore it's a whole family here and Mike is aware of that more than a lot of people in Annapolis are so uh, you know I'm a lifelong fan of the Hearns <laughs> and the whiskey and uh, and for that reason every time I come home you know I live in Boston but I still come home and the first place I usually drop by is the whiskey so that should say something to you hopefully about uh, how important to Annapolis I think this place is and how this place has made me really feel like this is home and you know that's that's basically how I feel yeah, if it wasn't for the fan, if it wasn't for the employees at the whiskey, this place wouldn't be what it is. Um, very relaxed, music conscious group of people here, um, but at the same time, we know how to run the place. So, whiskey's where it's at. You know, I mean, musicians, when when you're in the same boat and you're not trying to make a million dollars, just trying to have a good time and make some good music, and you know, like build your empire a person at a time. I mean. All the bands are in the same boat, so, I mean, regardless of the location, the musicians are always going to be pretty cool, but, I mean, here, once we've gotten to play more and more shows together, especially at the Whiskey, I mean, you become a family. Uh, there was a lot of good music coming up around that time, so everybody was kind of raising the bar every week, and, uh, and then all of a sudden it kind of 
turned into all these guys that you met at open mic or all of a sudden playing around town. And uh, I don't know, it was a lot a lot of cool stuff was was happening at these at these open mics and a lot of good good people, like everybody that works here is really cool, real supportive of the music and you just got a feeling of community and family and just you know like positive feedback all the time. And uh, yeah, it's it's a cool place to see. I'm Julie from Sweet Lita, and I just want to say that uh, the whiskey in Annapolis is where um, all of us come to be with our musician friends and uh, drink too much and support each other and love each other and uh, we're here every Christmas season and every Thanksgiving season because we're so excited to just be with our musician family in Annapolis and be with each other and uh, I don't know what we would do without this place. So thank you. Go. Well, I have found that uh, so Socrates. It's okay, I can edit. Um, uh, he said, "Music, uh, gymnastic, gymnastics is for the body, but music is for the brain." <laughs>